we're mixing two things now, blockchain and smart contracts, because smart contracts existed in 70s, uh, like 40 years, 50 years almost ago, uh, because a smart contract is, is a just a way of writing down the logic of a typical contract in a very strict way, like a computer program. So the smart contract is just a procedure of a contract that we're meeting in life, um, written down in a very strict program, pro strict way, like I said, like um, in a computer program. The problem is that if we'll take a typical contract, it's most of the sentences we'll find there are not um, narrow enough uh, to execute them. So we'll need a lot of, don't, don't care about what's there inside, it's just an example of size of what we think and another slide will show how it really works. But, um, so, so we have that agreement and in that agreement there are a lot of, a lot of uh, logical rules um, but a lot of them are not specific enough. So then we need judges, courts. Um, so we need to execute that contract, which wasn't clear. And that unclearness of that contract, unclearness of law, is a problem and it is very costly. So we're trying to, in those regulated, really well-known markets like stock trading, we're introducing um, this way of writing down those contracts in a way as programmers do. Uh, and uh, then there is a blockchain. And the blockchain is a technology that allows us to, um, to make those um, contracts uh, stored somewhere and the decision we make, because those contracts, they're having some uh, decision points, so we can go um, one direction or another, like there's something missing, but you can, you can take decision, and that decision is often um, have to be stored somewhere in the, in the way that it's irreversible, uh, that uh, can be publicly or by some uh, parties checked and that there won't be doubts about that. While we're getting to courts, we often uh, have some uh, misunderstandings because someone's saying that he's done something, the other party saying that he didn't, or he did it that it's not uh, valid, or he did it a day earlier or a day later or an hour later because it was, uh, the deadline was up to five and he's done it at six. And actually the blockchain helps us in that tiny detail to store that that it's uh, easy to prove, cheap to prove, we don't have to go and check the stamp date and uh, sue someone to prove that something happened because no one would argue with a timestamp on blockchain. That's uh, the other technology. And then when we're joining actually, smart contract, which is only the logic of the contracts which we have, and blockchain, there are a lot of new opportunities that are appearing. Still, there are some uncertainties like um, that we cannot program easily and we need uh, oracles in those systems. Oracles are external inputs that we agree to um, depend on um, and they're not actually put that like, here we have uh, some, let's, let's say, user that uh, I hope you don't see the text on it, it's just <laughs> It's just the structure. We have uh, some user which has his private key to, to sign some decision and it's super cheap and super easy to tell if he done it or not. Let's say he took a decision of his selling or not before the midnight, the, some stock, let's say. And um, that's easy. But then we have mm, some external factor like uh, temperature, let's say. So we have some insurance for the weather insurance for uh, someone and he wants to get uh, some mm, revenue of that insurance if the temperature will keep above 30 degrees for 30 days. And actually we need some kind of oracle here 
that will tell if it happened or it didn't. What smart contracts helps us is that we can put a whole system of oracles and the logic between, like in an insurance company. We can uh, ask a couple of guys to come, which will judge if the car was crashed and how much it was worth. But we can uh, put in the logic of smart contract the whole algorithm, how we'll take an average of those three guys who put the price on the repair, and whole procedure of, uh, uh, of what to do if we won't agree with the guy. So let's, on the, on the example of uh, insurance contract, let's say we crash the car and we're saying we want a thousand dollars for a repair and then the company have 24 hours to agree or disagree simple thing but let's say they they agree that simple they're um, we're taking from their deposit the money and paying the guy but then they d disagree they're saying it's 500 so then we're employing some guy who's coming and uh, giving him this his decision and um, and let's say then the, then, the, then the guy who crashed the car can agree and disagree for, let's say, 24 hours. Then if he disagree, again, we can take three guys who will give their price and we'll take an average. And then, but then if, then we can say if the, if the average was around what the company was offering, then the guy gets the price, but without, but he's covering as well the costs of employing those three guys. And all that algorithm can be put it. Um, in a smart contract, but the input from the guys, they are oracles. We can systemize those oracles, but, uh, but it's still simplifying. We don't have those uh, problems like we have in uh, Polish parliament that someone just uh, switched the or and and uh, in, some, uh, in some agreement uh, and that was a huge difference. And, uh, and then we can argue what that means, what was the intentions. There are no intentions, there's just code, and th this is very uh, strict how we execute that. So we have three things. We have blockchain, mostly to stir, store and prove of, the, uh, of the timestamp the inputs. We have smart contracts that are actually possible and kind of existing for 50 years, and have uh, oracles. But um, but the, there's another problem. We actually think that the contract is more or less that complicated as I showed here, and even the simplest contract looked like that. And that's not easy to program. And it's not easy to find um, where are the mistakes. And there are super costly mistakes with uh, blockchain technologies. As you probably heard some of the uh, first problems like the DAO, which stock, uh, which was a 160 million problem, and there's actually a ranking of problems like that. Even there's a Polish group that had a issue with freezing 100 million dollars for a couple of weeks, <sighs> because when you have a system complex like this one, you, sh you you actually have the agreements we are having on paper now are complex as this one. Just we're not aware of that and we're allowing for a lot of interpretation. And then we're going to court and it was not clear, it was not line, it was like blurred something. And then someone afterwards decide arbitrarily what that mean. Uh, here it is strict and because of it strict it can uh, have some bugs, holes in those contracts that uh, smart people are trying to um, execute and profit. Um, when we have really well working contract, it's cheap because we don't have to argue. We're not covering the uh, arguing costs. We're not spending time for arguing. But what I want to convince you that actually deploying working, well working smart contract on blockchain is super, super complicated. So the contracts we are having so so working are the simplest actually contract we can think of so the contracts of exchanging values money transfer that are actually smart contract because transferring money from one account to another account is the most trivial the easiest simplest contract we can have and even though we can have some problems with those because sometimes we want a couple of people signing that contract like two or three 
in a group or because we have a, uh, some uh, complex structure in the company that the accountant is uh, putting the, um, the actual transfer but it's being signed by a CEO or CTO or two of the board or something. So what we think is complex like that is more, more like, like, like the right one. And, um, and since the mm, technology like B Bitcoin, which was, I believe, the first implementation of putting them, them together, um, we have it for seven years or so, seven, eight, nine, something like that. Still we have bugs, still we have some minor issues. So I believe that, that it's great to put those smart contracts and blockchain to uh, more and more complex situations. And in the future, for sure, we'll have it. But it's like internet in pre-90s. We just have the basics. We're imagining what will be the future. But that future might not come as, as easily. We have to deal with basic problems. We're now um, moving to stock uh, exchange uh, trading, which is a bit more complex. We're trying to put some regulations and uh, security um, security structures in those um, contracts. Um, but it's I, I haven't seen an implementation of uh, of that working in a huge scale that I would uh, actually switch and uh, take the risk. Um, and that's that's another part. What's behind it? <laughs> that's uh, that's the infrastructure. That's uh, another funny thing about how the blockchain currently in a, in a proof of work um, manner works. The competition there, because partially uh, those smart contracts are being used to pay for the infrastructure of, of uh, proof of work itself. So I wanted to sh show. Um, the other part, I'm, I hope that I convinced you that you have to be really careful in deploying uh, smart contracts in any trading and you can most probably in your own field imagine how many loopholes and, uh, and bugs can happen in, a, in, any, in any contract uh, in your field. But uh, I want to, if, if I might switch to another presentation I wanted to show since uh, I didn't want to show that in, in the first uh, place, but, um, but since it was mentioned in the, in the first uh, presentation, I want to just show a tiny part of energy aspect that it's uh, uh, implementing. You showed the, uh, the profile of uh, use, uh, use of energy in uh, US, as I remember. This is the profile in Poland, and uh, it's it's uh, getting more and more steep. It's actually a profile of some really heavy day that 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 we had some tiny blackouts. Um, it shows how uh, energy is being used in those uh, daytime in Poland, actually. So it's uh, different than than you showed, and we as well have a DSR problem uh, program to. Um, to pay for uh, switching off some uh, mm, energy use, but it's only for now. It's only for uh, large-scale uh, mm, companies. But what's happening now? We're having huge mining facilities, like I, like I showed uh, before, and actually, what we're seeing here, especially the one here in the middle. Uh, they're getting uh, quite big, and all of those are in Poland. And uh, and what's happening, and uh, and growing, it's it's over exaggeration. It's ex exaggeration what I'll show here. But uh, what's happening? We're filling the gap in the in the night. So there's a growing um, growing usage of energy as well, very stable, uh, and uh, with energy trading by just the um, proof of work facilities uh, which might be mm, might be uh, unintuitive to contraintuitive to uh, think of 
but by uh, raising the demand, we can as well flatten the profile uh, which is which is happening. And for proof of work, it's not that important if we switch off for like an hour or two du during the day because some other part of infrastructure in other part of the world will take care of that. And it's a huge market. I want just to mention that uh, this is uh, this is a market of proof of uh, proof of work transaction in blockchain. Bitcoin blockchain only. It's not that up to date because it's like half year, ha half a year old data, but it's uh, for sure much higher now. So this is the usage of uh, of um, blockchain uh, blockchain proof of work um, system nowadays um, for a Bitcoin only, and with an assumption that all of the market is using the most uh, power effective devices which is not true so we can imagine that it's the minimum which is using uh, I, l I would estimate that it's between uh, one and a half or twice as much um, and we're moving to um, huge scale solution like con containers uh, scale uh, um, data centers and this is a profit out of those uh, income, not profit, of those um, operations uh, globally for only uh, signing the transaction in block Bitcoin blockchain. This is uh, income uh, half a year ago. Today it would be 10 times more, more at least. So again, it's not update. Uh, and this is really easy comparison. How uh, how much is that uh, energy is worth? Because the amortization of uh, devices is um, diminishing in in that in that context. So actually, the energy used for authorization is worth uh, how much would be in dollars? It's uh, it's uh, one thousand three hundred zlotus at least. Uh, and that's why that's important because that helps to fill that gap since we can th the energy around the top is around 1300 uh, zlotus worth and here uh, during the night if we would skip the taxes and some uh, some other uh, middle guys it would be 50 80 zlotus uh, um, per uh, megawatt hour. Uh, so by filling that gap with mining in uh, local places, which is possible because the containers are easy to move to the place that it's, uh, it's cheap to mine because of the energy is cheap, and we can mine in, the, in those gaps. We can uh, make uh, the whole uh, electricity blackouts less common and uh, and the whole market more stable which has almost nothing to do with smart contracts and blockchain other than it is used to back it up so that's just our estimation because we're starting a project uh, mm, with uh, january next year to deploy um, this uh, industrial s s scale uh, data center with uh, with single unit of 1.5 megawatt uh, average use, um, and this is our estimation of uh, of that investment per one unit, and we're deploying that unit next year, just uh, just as a building um, proof of concept or showing how it how it's going to work in. Uh, in that scale, of course, we're doing a lot of a uh, lot of other things on uh, on top of that. For example, we'll be reusing the uh, heat from that uh, um, data center, which is uh, possible in that kind of data center only because um, it is a stable uh, stable stream of heat. Since usually the data center is all the time most of the time working ab around 15 percent of uh, maximum usage right? and uh, and we're using uh, all the time near the average so that's it thank you